Welcome back to the News at 10. Africa's largest agriculture event, the African Green Revolution Forum, ends today in Nairobi, Kenya. Now, one of the highlights at the meeting is the inaugural award of the new Africa Food Prize. The prize was created to call attention to the individuals and institutions inspiring and driving agriculture innovations across the continent. Our correspondent Ayola Kasim reports. The unsung heroes of Africa's food production, the small-scale farmers, are the main focus of a five-day intensive deliberation in Nairobi by more than 1,500 delegates from 40 countries. Agribusinesses are growing through African small and medium enterprises from seeds to markets. So far, it's just a glimpse of success, but it offers an inspiring new vision of a future Africa, growing ever stronger thanks to the works of the rural farmers. The largest private sector group in agriculture are smallholder farmers. In fact, they invest the largest proportion into agriculture than government, than private sector, than our development partners. Dr. Mwanze has been an advocate for the smallholders for decades for his outstanding leadership and passionate advocacy in putting Africa's farmers at the center of the global agricultural agenda. The Africa Food Prize Committee, chaired by former President Olusha Gwambasanjo, awarded him the inaugural Africa Food Prize. He sees them not just as recipients of seeds or advice, but as partners in learning how to do things better, how to make the leap from subsistence survival to a thriving business. Closing statements. The 2016 African Green Revolution Forum wrapped on Friday, having delivered a massive infusion of financial, political and policy commitments to African farmers and agricultural businesses on a continent eager for new, more inclusive opportunities for economic growth. Um, I have been in agriculture for a very long time. This is the time that everything seems to be coming together. On finance, on technology, on institutions, and on political will to drive this change. And so we, can't be, we couldn't be more excited than to be here. We have to be held accountable to the commitments we have met. We should now stop talking and let us just go and do it. More than $30 billion in investments over the next 10 years to increase production, income and employment for smallholder farmers and local African agriculture businesses were pledged during the meeting. According to African Green Revolution Forum organizers, that's the largest single package of financial commitments ever delivered to African agriculture. Ayola Kasim reporting for Channels Television News. We cross over to the world of business now. Here's Anne Wawudu. Welcome to Business News, the last trading day of the week. As an economist and chief executive officer of financial derivatives company, Mr. Bris Makrewane believes it may take Nigeria almost two years to get out of recession unless the federal government targets spending to grow consumer confidence. According to Mr. Rewani, sales of assets to raise more dollars and an increased deficit financing plan is crucial for recovery. It is that this recession is going to take you at least 12 to 18 months to get out of, right? And that is what we call a U curve. Now, to do this, we need to, first and foremost, we must inject money into the system. And you, President Buhari has said it, you can see it's now fully engaged. It's coming out and talking about every issue, right? The vice president is also coming out. So the executive is fully engaged. You can't, you can't hide in this. You can't, do, and you can't blame the past administration. You have to deal with the current problems as you have it. Given the falling oil revenues, you have to increase the deficit plan for the recovery. You must borrow, and the president has said, we're going to borrow at least $5 billion externally. We must sell some assets. When you are in this kind of situation, you have to sell assets. We will issue monies from the euro bond on the 19th of September. The, 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 the federal government would have the um, proposals from the advisors. They will pick advisors, two advisors to advise them on this. You have to look at the minimum wage and the social intervention programs because a devaluation, a recession means that people have, in people's incomes are falling. You need to make good for this.
Niger's local currency fell by 0.86% to 310 naira 64 kobo against the greenback at the close of trading today. And that's ahead of the two-day Eid al Kabir celebrations next week. Traders and analysts expect the naira to remain stable at current levels as a result of low liquidity at the interbank market. Meanwhile, trading at the interbank forex market is expected to resume on Wednesday, September the 15th. The Nigerian Communications Commission has shut the offices of Nokia Alcatel for operating in the country without necessary permit. According to the spokesman of the telecoms regulator, Mr. Tony Ojobo, the manufacturer failed to obtain the two million naira license required for the sale and installation of network equipment. In reaction to this, Nokia says it is in talks with the NCC to secure the license and that its offices will reopen soon. Nigerian equities closed today's session flat and mixed sentiments from investors continue ahead of a two-day Muslim holiday next week. Let's join BC Adibayo for the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Reports. The Nigerian equities market ended Friday's session flat with a 0.01% uptick in the key index. The all share index closed the week at 27,577.52 with a market capitalization of 9.47 trillion naira. Volume traded came in at 272.84 million shares valued at 1.52 billion naira and exchanged by investors in 2,843 deals. Investors' appetite increased on corn oil following its satisfactory full-year 2015 results. The stock appreciated by over 10% ahead of Africa Prudential Registrars and 7-Up Bottling Company. Both gas, NACO and AG Leventis were the top losers for this session. On the volume chart, UBA, Ikeja Hotel and Diamond Bank came in at the top three category. And that ends the stock market reports. I am BC Adebayo. Thanks a lot, BC. Global equities closed sharply lower today with much focus on markets, U.S. markets especially, following more concerns that the Federal Reserve might raise interest rates this month. Let's check, take a look at those figures. And that's business news tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Owawodo. Back to you, Ijoma. Nigeria's leading food and agro-allied company, Flour Mills of Nigeria PLC, has declared over 2.6 billion naira as total dividend for the 2016 financial year. This represents a dividend of one naira per ordinary share of 50 kobo each. The announcement formed part of proceedings at the company's 56th annual general meeting here in Lagos. <laughs> This is the 56th annual general meeting of Flour Mills Nigeria PLC and gathered here are shareholders and members of the board. Having seen an 11% increase in revenue, 49% increase in profit before tax and a 70% increase in profit for the year. It's time for the board of Flour Mills Nigeria PLC to fulfill the annual meeting obligation. The dividend amounts to 2,624,253,188 naira, which amounts to one naira per share. This declaration has generated positive reactions from the entire shareholders. The dividend. Uh, one naira dividend is okay, but it could be better. I know the company has been constantly paying dividends. Every year we get dividends. So that is why we are giving our support to them. For the board, it's important to step up investment in core food businesses in line with strategic business thrust. The reduction from last year is related to the state of the general economy and the difficulties that we all face uh, in the current environment environment. Uh, we feel it prudent to keep the reserves in the company 
uh, and keep them for a rainy day and invest them in the future, which is what we're doing in building our agro-allied businesses, which are really getting raw materials uh, from the nature, from land in Nigeria, and from aggregation to process in our industry. We are focusing on aggregating local grains for our agro-allied businesses, especially corn. We want to see how we can continue to aggregate corn, we can see how we can continue to aggregate soybean and sorghum, and use these ones, adding value to them, processing them, so that our philosophy of farm to table can really be real in the Nigerian in our context. With a clear vision to continue to support the federal government's backward integration policy, the company says it is determined to ensure agro-allied strategies provide sustainable returns on capital invested by maximizing local content in group products. Castec Engineering Limited says oil and gas companies doing business in Nigeria, the Gulf of Guinea and West Africa can believe in its capacity to provide all their project delivery needs. The management of the company made this known during a facility tour of the fabrication yard on Snake Island in Lagos State, adding that by the year 2018, the company will have created more than 2,000 jobs. The management team of Castec Engineering Limited is here with other oil and gas companies and delegates from the Nigerian Content and Monitoring Board. They want to brainstorm on meeting the pertinent needs of the oil and gas industry and the capacity of Castec to deliver. Castec takes the audience through their company policies and modes of operations, some ongoing projects, their continuous improvement culture, aspirations and progress made so far. Seven years of operation in Nigeria. That done, next is the facility tour of Castex Fabrication Yard on Snake Island with the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board. So you're welcome, sir. Members of the Monitoring Board seem excited in the ability of Castex to provide its services. While we we're here, we saw quite a lot of things, a lot of um, jobs going on in terms of um, um, fabrication and all that. But they are not there yet. They have three phases, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Going to entail a lot of expenses, trying to bring in equipment, and then trying to complete what is on ground. Castex says over 2,000 direct jobs will be created by December 2018. We are training a lot of Nigerian engineers, divers, then, um, welders, and all, all, all uh, other um, aspects of um, the oil industry. That's what we're doing. Uh, but the most important thing here is that we are seeking, we are begging, we are asking the um, NCD to, to help us because we must sustain the level of uh, the, 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 the job we are doing here. We don't want to lay people uh, um, off anymore and then we don't want to stop. And with this indigenous fabrication yard in Nigeria, more content and facilities may become domiciled in the country. We think it so that uh, we have uh, the capability. Next on the news at 10, Team Nigeria increases medal haul at the 2016 Rio Paralympic Games. Roland Desurike wins gold in powerlifting. And that's on sports. We join us again.